as it turned out, uh, about three or four months after this, Reuters decided that they needed to close down my position uh, in Israel. It was costing too much at a time of cutbacks. So in a way, representative of a contracting uh, industry at this time. So I took a buyout, and that's when I decided to work on the book. But much like TJ, my Marine colleague who was forced out of the Marines and had to forge his own new identity as a civilian, I too had to figure out what my new identity was going to be. And that was a very difficult thing because I had been this, you know, as Alan described me, this globetrotting war photographer for Reuters and had done well, had, you know, uh, had lots of stories published around, had won various awards and, and had a nice, a nice job in security, I thought. Um, and uh, suddenly I was cast out in a way, or that's how it felt. And I was no longer part of this. Uh, it's like, it felt like being culled from the herd. And so I was grappling to make sense of my, my own experiences in these pictures and these kinds of environments that I've shown you today. And I'd been working on the idea of this book with TJ for some time, but I really decided at that point to pour all my efforts into it and to try and do something where all of these things that I did and experienced and tried to learn from were going to be poured into this, this book that, yes, it's about war. Um, yes, it's about what happens after war. But also, it's, it's a story really about an unlikely friendship between two guys who made a decision to go to war. We didn't have war inflicted upon us. We're privileged in the sense that we could leave, or at least I could leave, and he would leave eventually too. Um, but we thought, look, he discovered through his writing that other veterans were gaining something from his articles. They were seeing that they weren't alone. And I realized that, you know, journalists, we don't generally like to be the center of a story. Um, we're meant to be objective. Uh, but I realized that he had, he had had this quite cathartic experience in writing about his, his own story um, and sharing it with other Marines. And I thought, well, if I do that, as uncomfortable as it may feel, maybe uh, people won't as feel, uh, people who read it won't feel as alone as I did when I left Reuters and when I was trying to figure things out for myself. Because one of the things about trauma is that it, it is very isolating. Your, your instinct is to withdraw, it's to pull back away from, from everything. It's, 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 uh, it's an evolutionary um, thing, really. If you, if you were the caveman who went out hunting and got injured by a saber-toothed tiger, you would retreat into a cave so that you, know, you wouldn't get eaten. Um, and, and that's the same kind of thing that's still with us. We try to shrink away from the things that may damage us. But that becomes a very lonely and isolating experience. And the thing that you need to be doing at a time like that is actually engaging with those people who can support you and who, who can help you. So the idea of the book was really to show um, how friendship and those close to you will, will make a difference when you are facing your most difficult struggles personally. Um, and that, that's whether you're a member of the military, a member of the media, or just anybody in, in, in the general public, really. But we also kind of wanted to bridge this, this divide between the civilian idea of war and the military experience of war, and, and compare and contrast what it was like for TJ as a combatant and me as, as a witness. And, and in a way, I'm the civilian conduit into his world that he opens up and discusses at, uh, you know, in great detail and, and in a very powerful and emotional way the things that he had to grapple with and the things that he did that wounded his soul. Um, and it's not the threat of, of bodily injury. Um, you get over that fear pretty quickly when you've experienced combat um, or even dying. It's, it, that, that doesn't really become an issue. It's more the moral quandaries, the ethical questions that we have to confront as journalists and that the moral things that he has to confront as, um, as a warrior who, who did things that he's ashamed of, that he will live with for the rest of his life and that he'll have to explain to his daughter and now to a public that's going to ask him questions about the things that he did in Iraq. So in a sense, we're trying to lay bare the things that we've seen and done and to make sense of them in a way that will hopefully be useful for fellow journalists and for, for anybody who reads it in, in the public who, who's dealing with trauma. One of the things for me that, that I found really good is um, I've taken to cycling. I ride a lot. I ride 300 kilometers a week maybe on my bike. This is in Ireland where I wrote a lot of the book. And uh, 
for me, exercise is kind of my meditative thing. I would, I would ride during the day and I would write during night. And, uh, and it allowed me to think about a lot of things and, and, to, and to go to places that were uncomfortable to go to and, and to try and confront them and, and, uh, and think about how I would share them in the book.